Come out. I can I can do yeah. my, my reenactment of the second last class of trash that I passed out <laughs> at the end tonight. Oh yeah, that was good. Doing my own dock water effect. Hmm. And what are we it. supposed to talk about again? So he, he's already shooting, of course. Oh, so where are we yeah, going? we're live, I think. Well, See, he just he sort of tricked us. I forgot to get into character. Oh, well, no, we are in character. <coughs> we are characters. So do I need to explain the game to you? Um, you can explain the game to me, although... They do things like they get dressed, they shave, they eat dinner, and so on. So, you know, I just so the challenge is just, you know, just to remake the sort of into... Begin the game, because well, art's really a kind of game. game. Six. Okay, guys, six. So what do I so do? You can take what? either your blue or your or your yellow man out into the start zone. This is the start zone. Yeah, yeah. And then you, One, you can pop two, pop the race again. Four, five, six. 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 forward to clockwise motion according to the numeric. So I can move well, I thought one gets me out. Well you can but you can pull one of your blue guys out. Yeah, I gotta do that. Because yeah. okay. like I'm way ahead now. I'll right. so. <laughs> I got six. Conversation with me in the chair. Screen right. So what was your, your first uh, memory involvement? Yeah. Um, well, uh, um, my first memory involvement. Well, the first one actually was when I was, was so uh, 16 years old. I joined the team right. and uh, met Bryce, and, uh, who uh, struck me at that time as a scary enigmatic man. And uh, so I just thought it was more I know that, but <laughs> at 16 it was a little too overwhelming, and so I muscled up the courage to put a painting in the, in the group show. This is when they were on uh, that true story, yeah. and you know, on James. Yeah. And I put one in, and, and uh, arrogant and glad that I was, I was so uh, appalled so. that my work was delegated to the third floor <laughs> that I, uh, I never returned after that point. And then it was uh, not until I had been painting for Among the chairs. And Extreme had left. the arts council that I decided I better I better I better hook up with other artists. So I uh, the membership out. And then I you know, honestly I can't remember how how because it was such a blur, because you were at the arts council and then I was just kind of hanging around the arts council teaching guitar to the guy. It, it affected me mostly because of my disappointment. And then suddenly I'm, you know, we hit that point where, where the Arts Council were blending a little bit and being able to I mean, it's boring once it's been the same old, same old, same old for years. Well, I remember the first time I met you. It's not a figure five. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Artistic art monster in itself. I've already grown tired of the game. And the yellow one. What? What? I'm a couple of months away from 60, for God's sake. And, uh... Okay. This, there, is, this, is, this, is, this is a group of 18 years old and so on. <laughs> that's probably you guys that maybe we're not aware of, or maybe, aware of, or maybe you are aware of. Like the only gallery I sort of know of is Pedersen's Gallery off the street, which tends to be more. And basically, I was on the selection committee. It appears to be young, emerging artists kind of stuff. And that kind of work is also probably the hardest work to say. Terms of accessibility. Yeah. So, as a street young gallery, yeah, I didn't know if you were going to keep it on the and you would be collecting Pays for the space so they can do whatever the hell they want. You know, and they're not going to be constrained by anything else. So, I guess what I'm getting at 
Are you aware of a young group coming up or organizations or anything like what they did or used to be? I applied for it. I'm sure there are. What are you going to do with the exhibition school in Morgan City? I mean, by that point, what do we do in the Arts Council? I remember the first time I went to one of year or something. I think it was like the ink. Uh, the spectator gallery, the gallery of the mall, the Chagall's, and plus there was this weird the deal we had with the Sheraton where we were putting it takes five around. years to, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, to make sure yeah, that it was Yeah, it was like nuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. At that time, it was um, so the first year of five years. Yeah. She didn't want to do another hiring process. Yeah. And it was even one of the artists who had kind of been hanging around the office a little I said, well, I'd recommend you. Yeah, it's not going to burn itself out ever. Well, it might burn itself out, but it'll come back. Whoever walks in first, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. It's going to come back. The most likely that will be the fact that the customs are that they are getting. And nobody, young artists, don't see what it offers to them. That is the worst space available to you when you run a center of state that the teams of tenure pay and to sort of just go on and a sort of other habit in that with Yeah. Because the grant money is there, so we have to. Well, I, and that's yeah, the other dilemma. I mean, yeah, then it moves itself into the space of the public gallery. A little bit of how the selection committee worked in that area. So we have to get all this. I mean, we have to go through all these traumas in order to avoid that right? But at the same time, I mean, to rejuvenate on that side, you know, we mentioned the, the granting bodies. When we have these traumas, all of a sudden that stirs the pot on that side. Well, that is a little bit of, a, I, I felt a little bit of a blindness on their part. You know, whenever they see an artist or a center in trouble, they back off and withhold the funding. Yeah. And, well, maybe it's a strategy. Maybe they said, okay, let's see how quickly they can get the art together. On the other hand, they should so know like an that wrote, uh, an artist uh, uh, has to keep it, and that's the life, that's the natural state in the life of the art for center. So they shouldn't be rally around for it. That would rally behind that artist and say, artist for doing these things that you know, probably on textbook. And that's how artists for center came about in the first place. Yeah, revolution. But then became part of the system at the same yeah. time, as soon as the grand mm -hmm. movement did get started. Yeah, and over time. And it's yeah. become more and more structured, and, and the difference between the tunnel has gone from being this yeah. uh, It was basically the, the, an artist's organization. There are still, to some extent, and now it's almost broken down into um, the regional area. Membership is. I think when I started the yeah, I think about and this may be one of the biggest dilemmas the ink's going through right now is we sword you know, in the last up until the last the urban like style artist run center. This is like the at the expense the of the feelings kind of and opinions doing all the representing and the representation of the membership is it always seems that there's like a more and more and more it's basically made up of like whatever the people on the regional level would be the representation of membership basis. <laughs> so there's a board of anywhere from back four to me. And you feel that's very strong. And then there's like, uh, uh, like regular I, I think tiers. And basically it's this core I don't know that we can do anything but basically do that. I mean, the membership is very clear. I mean, they've said, well, this is the kind of staff that does board. all this like ridiculous and work either have to on pay for a lot of time you know, and, and a center for collapse of it. So nope, we're doing it this way and whether, whether you agree with me or not, you're either with us or you're against us and we can do all the energy. energy. But that being said, I mean, we're you know, I, 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 or you have to say, okay, well, this is what you feel. And this is what you feel. The problem is, in many ways, I mean, we're probably the biggest regional artist run center. Basically, yeah, my first memory, I need to jump back. So my first memory was, actually, I went to school in Hamilton, Burlington, all the way down to St. Catherine. I was living in Hamilton for the summer of 87, because I was working at Fasco. And basically, she had gone to show at the third space, which is the member's space. And originally, it's called the third space, because it was on the third floor. I mean, we support a lot of artists. Do you still was that? Do you think that that's still necessary? Uh, it's a for a while and, uh, context for like artistic activity. Yeah. I, I think it is. I think it's necessary. So this was, I think, um, I think it was 1987 or 1988. So it's actually, the first show I had as an artist, finding agents, it's still necessary. Was actually at the end. 
Wine Street on, on the and you're always you're always and, walking uh, that like fine line and trying to, have to be a member, so maintain your funding, but at the same time not failing the administrator at the core members and like there was people. There was this weird and phase it, it's not an easy it's not an easy and, and, to and, walk and, 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 and myself where I mean, and fundamentally I think nobody really knows anymore what the administrator is going to say. It was like this jungle. I think it, you know, 30 years on, things have So we had this show, I remember. Yeah, we had this community. Maybe we're just not really sure what we are. Do you think that's true of all of our centers? That there's been a, just a shift uh, generally from that grassroots thing of the 60s, basically 60s, 70s is when it really started to develop in Canada. I think there is, fundamentally, I think there's a real shift towards. And then my next memory is coming from moving to A lot of our science centers, I think, have become a lot of galleries and stuff. Institutionalized. Institutionalized. Because I was still just under 25 and I'd just been out of school. I guess a lot of us in England. Can't abide that great uh, <laughs> institutionalization. And, uh, I remember if I was even still but, but then, that, that, as you say, that's what the Arts Council is expect, and, and governments, those kinds of terms, the kind of buzzwords. And I just said, so, well, you so know, do you think that the uh, artists around the galleries have changed themselves? Not unlike, uh, do you remember uh, the? Yeah, Thomas Wolfe wrote painted word, the painted yeah. work. So there was so that started, like, whole concept that painters were all of a sudden painting for the press, for the critics, for the walls, rather than from their own, you know, in order to, to gain fame. Do so, um, you think the galleries and uh, the arts and spaces, etc., have changed? <coughs> Because they have to conform to what the why government considers good business. Partly that, but I think it's also. A feeling like of um, oh, aspiring towards yeah, a more sophisticated well, kind should, of should, uh, should, uh, involvement in the in organizational practice. And so, so you have to have policy. So you have to have the board. You have to have you know all those things. And it may ultimately make things less fun. Uh, I mean, I mean, I would it'd be great if. Really, I'm not saying it's still at the point, but we could still visit each other's studios and. Uh, get together and talk about each other's work. And, uh, uh, you know, those kinds of activities were specifically uh, mentioned in, in the original Constitution because we thought they, that's what we all wanted to do. It may be what we all still want to do, but um, the way it's evolved, um, it almost, the organization almost prevents us from doing that. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing more and more pressure, for instance, uh, to put aside the model of having members actually sit on the selection committee and, and artist members choosing the, the artists who will make up the coming year's program. Uh, we're still doing that. You know, a lot of artists run centers, I don't think, are doing that anymore. And there is, there's a pressure on you know, by funding agencies to, to drop that. <laughs> and all of them were drinkers, so a board so meeting was, was to go to the fridge, get a beer, uh, light a cigarette, sit in this in this unaired room, smoking, and then and we've, we've to this point has been resisted. And then, so to me, there was this sometimes it's the best position. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's, um, it ends up. You know, call the meeting to order, a meeting called to order at 7 05, and you know, go back to the light up a cigarette and, and get, get to work kind of thing. So, and you know, I, you know, the first couple of years, I think I just was sort of sitting like, a, like any board member, I think. Because it was only like you and I, maybe Carolyn, didn't smoke, everyone else smoked. Yeah, and then, and then, and then, and so who would have been there? Would have been. Uh, questioned by many artists and Michael Algal, Paul right? Morski uh, were on the board. So yes, I've been involved with it. Carolyn Sankova. Right. Um, was Jim Riley I, I think selection. No, so Jim Riley had just left. Just selection just uh, programming. Um, has Jane Aitney was there for, for artists. At some point, when I was artist. Oh, I strongly uh, support the board. Carolyn Sankova was on the board. Oh, right. Dermot was there. It was around. So that was sort of shifted a lot. It was just the first years, and then within about five or six years. You like the company so much? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, yeah, I became president, but at that point, like this, this sort of transformation that happened in Patrick. Well, it's back to your idea. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm
Well, it seems to be the closest way to achieve a lifestyle and production that are insane. Yes. You know, because you usually have to give yourself away to what other people want you to do. We're all stubborn, so you can do series. I don't know. <laughs> you just have to get creative. You have to get kind of creative and find really loopholes in there. You know, sort of help artists find these loopholes. You know, seriously. You know, I just think to continue that mode of behavior um, when we look at art. I think we're mostly here. We've been around for a while in Ray and maybe. But um, I'm thinking back to when I first started out. Um, and trying to sponsors <laughs> do my work. And then we get Harry Christ around the board. Um, oh, I'm an artist. Or or any real contact with or other artists. I didn't come from an arts training basis only, but I was training after I became an artist and I did that. So the ink in its original location on James was where I had my first solo show. Also, it was the place, since I was living out in Stone Creek, and I really didn't have a lot of um, uh, contact with people who were interested in art. And I lived in a, a social um, group in that, were, that was really not... Um, didn't really understand why anybody would do art. They had a sort of a you know, almost an very utilitarian Doing anything, it should have some kind of uh, monetary payback. Wow. It didn't seem to happen. They found out. <laughs> so we were so we all when I know that came across the ink, and I actually <coughs> can't even remember how that happened. I think it. I think it happened because I had some photos published in a magazine, and then somebody asked me if I wanted to bring them in and look like at them or something. I think it might have been Bryce actually. This is where the thing is good, of course. From the ink being so no, sure. no, 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 it's way before that. Yeah, it was 1980. Oh, way before that. Uh, 79, actually. And, um, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you're an artist and you're, uh, or you're a budding artist or you're an emerging artist, no matter what age you are, you don't know how to make contact with someone. I think an artist can send it. People bring in their art, and there's a panel, and, uh, and people give them a real critique. If I'm proud of anything that that some of the galleries and so on, and, and so on. Again, whether you get the people out there who would them benefit, or or they're just going to huddle in the basements because they don't want to be destroyed. Those evenings when we all brought our work and we spread it out on the floor and people were sometimes you know, you know, senior or nasty types would just tear you apart and uh, box auction kind of express but it was it was stimulating it was very stimulating as for uh, it was servicing a crowd you know of people who weren't ready to go and maybe some kind of a party there were two artists that showed up yeah, and that party seemed to seem to express certainly couldn't live on it or wasn't teaching it. Star and or be working somewhere else, I guess. I don't like the stereotype of the you know the artist in the gallery that that's kind of silly, but I think that we we a lot of us are don't want to and do everything we can to sort of live in the gaps uh, between all the bureaucracies and try to ignore all the institutions. I mean, I do myself, I try to live in the gaps, basically. I don't want to be able to participate in much of this stuff. The game is at this point, but I think we should again stick to it. Yeah, you can. You just block yourself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm incredibly proud of, like, that Artopia moment when you brought that up, you know, to me, one of the best ones you One of, one of the, the, the dogged things of the is what seems like often to be, like, endless movie,
So you, you've come to Leonardo. Clearly. Impressions, you want to walk through it with me? No, I don't. We have someone who knows what they're talking about. I think it's very disturbing. <laughs>
add the ink, add its druthers together, and in hindsight, I can say this, although I don't think it was possible at the time, there should have been a discussion about whether the ink should move, should change from being an artist-run center to some sort of hybrid between an artist-run center and, and a public gallery. Because there were, there were things that it was doing, that all of this stuff about big fundraisers and mm -hmm. looking for corporate sponsors and bumping up the level of publication and really worried, cons being concerned about how pristine the exhibition space is. All these things, in my mind, are kind of movements towards some sort of next step or next plateau for the gallery to take. And I don't think that that discussion, seeds of that discussion, were thrown out to the membership early enough. And I think that, that, that it was something that, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm mixed about it because, because in my mind, as board president, I think I would have loved Can I get a wine or sorry, a beer? I would have loved to So I could see angles, you know, I could see where you could position the ink as something other or something wholly different than what it was while still retaining certain aspects of it and, and keeping it sexy, I think, and keeping it yeah. kind of like happening. Um, and uh, let's face it, we weren't about the socialism, we were about the parties. Yeah, on some level, we but, but I think, the, yeah, <laughs> they were damn good parties. And I mean, there was, there was a shitload of great so I have a question for Dane. You know, I really Starting a gallery, secretary for the board, 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 board some talk about the real estate near the Wine Street. We really started to get a depression for a while. We might hear depression for a while. May actually be helping on the current art of fundraiser. Supports do you get the kind the of problem. advantages of being taken to me to get the fuck out of well, I've taken advantage of the <laughs> cheap property <laughs> values. Uh, no, I think. I don't know. I've talked with other people too. It's you really got to set up sort of. It's not sustainable to sell. Like it was such a weird proposal that it gets very touching and sensitive. It's getting out. I don't know how we feel about it now. And I'm not even sure it was like you got to you got to have those offsetting financial to do this and get up space up to this. Yeah. So I mean, if you're not making frames or canvases, you're not doing that at all. Business, you yeah, things that are actually going to pull in some views. Uh, uh, so, certainly for the initial, for the initial, I, uh, yeah. ultimately you want to be making this money, but you got to plan to not be making money. And, uh, you know, with sort of the situation, or you have the ability to. A member in the community. Do that. You have the ability to come in the and get a building uh, that's reasonable. Uh, better with a local uh, you, you have a get a local writer, rental yeah, income. Local you have the the alternative, alternative revenue sources that, that you can tap into. Things like that, which I think that is exactly like drug dealing. Yeah, prostitution. That's what the apartments are for. Right, and then why the hours? Why the hours? Zone budget. So yeah, I mean, and that's and that's what the downtown really offers, and that's a great. Jumping the, point. So if Tim right and Carol Butler want to do a CD release, yeah, you know, we we had the resources to give art, like give people to do that. How many fucking artists are there? What are what are they calling them? Uh, artist centers or art centers? Uh, what cultural centers? Cultural centers in Montana or Rainbow Beach? Yeah, I mean you've got the well, you've got it. If you're gonna do anything, you have to have. If I had like financial equipment on the same level, like for lots of them, but. If you got to go into the worst case scenario, and the worst case scenario is that you just don't. And I think, you know, I'm obviously. I mean, I mean, that's. Why you set yourself up for failure? I mean, if you just assume that you're going to sell nothing, then when you do sell one or two things, you then Then you are, you are a huge success. You are a huge success. To keep it alive. And yes, not necessarily are. And it very much is very much a win. People don't want to stay alive. They're a pajama shop. And myself, we're interested in performing. Everybody sleeps. No, it's true. No, I don't care.
Death Max. No airplane. If you if you set yourself if you set your business up in a way that time based performance based R and D, even in worst case scenarios, you still succeed. Well, why not? I mean, that's part of the reason why I had the gallery up here is that there's zero there's zero expenses. It's I don't have to make it. I don't have to sell it. I don't even have to try and sell it, and it will still succeed. For me, the difference is I I will still try to sell things. I will try to make more. I still wanted to sell things. Yeah, and you're not deluded in the sense that you're going to sell things. And I think you got to be realistic. And I think every business, I mean, restaurants are supposed to. If they don't make it after six months, you pack it in. Retail stores, you got to do the couple years or the year at least to like see. Okay, you gotta make money for yourself. And like all every business, every type of business varies in the amount of time that you need. Yeah, in a way it was substantial. And I I would say a lot of businesses are ten years to get their money back. Yeah, exactly. ten years to get the money back. Well, and I would say within the galleries in Hamilton, I would say the transit gallery is sort of your is your guide. And there was this them being around five years and have now. They, I think they have weird cemented themselves in the community as a substantial art gallery. They're, they're definitely a pillar. They're, they're a pillar. So, I mean, taking them as, you know, that would be the aim. The aim would be getting into the gallery game is to make yourself something in five years. If you do it before, then, well, obviously, you were doing the right thing. And hopefully those other people have helped you out. I mean... And I think it could be done before that. But it takes, I mean, for me, when I got into it, it was like a year. I figured out a year in, it was just visibility. It was just making your name in the art community. Second year, it was getting up to the public. Third year, it was like, ex like sort of with things from outside. Formulating an artist structure, picking an artist that I wanted to you know, run with. And your fourth and fifth year are like, that's when you're starting to make yourself. You're making your of money. You've got, you, you should have by that point. You should be working abroad. And then actually by the fifth year, you should be expanding out as a community. You should be taking those artists that you have and getting them outside into other regions. Or having, or pulling things in. And pulling things in, exactly. And, uh, and, ha and being, a, being a, a, a hub of different things, being connected with everything in the community, whether it be restaurants, music, other cultural groups. I think it's very, it's interesting to me that um, you started the, or you went a group of people started the Ink back in, what was it, 76? 75. And that up at that end of the street, and in 2005, you're still down, you're still on the street, further north. Yeah. Further north. You know, uh, closer to the mission, in this and about, that you know, in, in between those two areas and, now, all these galleries have popped up, really good uh, arts, sort of along the idea of the little uh, oasis of culture bubble, thing and, uh, that happens in any big city. You know, one person and, uh, opens up, you get a little bit deeper coming down, they start to say, oh, this is affordable real estate, I think and an then awareness. It was oh, Sublimatis, Sublimatis, Xena, and, 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 and the Prince uh, yeah. and Studio, and that, the uh, Prince Studio, the 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 Prince you know, we can't, we can't we forget the rate of also being able to continue as an artist or local artist or as opposed to people like themselves uh, to being an artist from the region, an artist from southern Ontario, an artist from Ontario. Ontario. You know, see, I, I lost a whole 30 years when I went to Toronto, so. But it was interesting because, I mean, the hammer was, was uh, A lot of those social sort of minor sort of squabbles, kind of like, you know, at, at one point, you know, because they kind of like even though the argument was, was don't need to address uh, thriving at that point, I And again, it's weird. I have this weird ambivalence still because, I mean, for, I think when I came in as an emerging artist, I, I felt yeah, maybe know, more so, strongly so about one position you know, than I did after eight and a half sprung years. From something very casual you know, to and, and your position broken. changes. I think yeah, the whole yeah, thing about because people an artist on center on some level, when it's working at its best, is transformational. That things are evolving, things are changing, things are not status quo. And I think really, I think actually, you know, anything, Place, right? I mean, a number of people. I, I probably, I was there each year. By Armstrong Center, time span, that's like a lot. Three lifetimes. <laughs> you know, the average yeah, turnover rate at the center is three to five years. And I think there's various reasons for that. Um, but one of them is I think a center needs to renew itself and reemerge mm -hmm. and find a generative kind of.
force. And so I think it kind of has to like yeah, uh, you know, uh, reinvent itself every three five years yeah. and certainly every decade. The, uh, um, so I think sometimes, up, but, you know, uh, I think we've been involved long enough. It's not just the chiefs, but the community. Downtown, we saw where well, there was clear right. where, where, where there were steps that we were involved in. And I think it was very intuitive. I don't think it was that sit down and have a plan. There was these intuitive things that came forward. Oh, yeah. And it's like we could see the possibilities for something like Inc. becoming, turning and evolving into something Well, I mean, even in the two years that I've been back, that was also a function of our involvement as part of in my a mind, a real renaissance. And our understanding of how that I don't see the general fact, public again, I think also necessarily sees it because we they still the see the blight, I didn't have you know, the hoarding, the, the, the unfinished Lister building, but it now is going to be refurbished. And all had a of these little cultural oh, yeah, you know, things that are happening. One of the things that happened so in the last few years is that because we're so involved with it, Every three it's hard for us to believe that other people are necessarily interested in so you. So what you, yeah. in any was, vibrant I, I, I never, area, the one, right when I was it can't the just be galleries. There has to be other stuff, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so antique stores or there, yeah, a pottery yeah. or this or a nice uh, place to eat, a bar, and so on. So James Doyle has all the earmarks. Of a gallery. And then, and then I remember there was a whole stream of discussion um, about how this was like a tight was just sort of a sinking ship that nobody could buy. Of course, nobody could change. And, yeah. It's interesting. I mean, in some ways, it's good that the community, community just like we're talking right now, likes to have these does these moments to, to convey the ink to that is the UB gallery, your gallery, to go through 10 years of galleries have those single meetings. I have never seen them. And I would say yes, because you know the one that happened for recycling sounds somewhat arrogant. But this is a neighborhood in transition, in transition that was supposed to be in place. Yeah. The people that are here, know, and you know, you know, we went through this whole thing. People all get together, the and they're angry, and they convention. And I guess they're talking about crack whores and all that kind of stuff. Well, the point is, people, regardless of their state or status, they might have to be someone. One of them. And they so tend they, to be. They, they want, they want to be. But to me, I can. But then when it comes down to it, it's that, look, it comes down to that notion they can't of the same to, 12 or 24 you know, people get a, who are kind of like, here anymore. So they move on to another you know, committed to this thing, whatever but, this thing uh, is exactly, are, are, are the ones who end up so generating and taking on whether you the, think the burden this is a positive thing or not. And, and taking is on the galleries uh, moving in. The fact that people complain and bitch and moan about this and just the other thing. But fundamentally, you know, so, okay, so it was, but you know, art was a reality to a certain amount of flat. And previous to that, I think it was, it was maybe like Jane Gordon and the Bawa group that took right. a certain amount of flack because they had a certain dominance in the late 80s. And I bet previous to that, there was, you know, early people who complained about, like, Bryce has his own core of people that includes, like, Yates and Donna Ivey and people have been there from the beginning. Okay, and I'm sure there was like disgruntled artists back in like 79 right, who like, right. you know, right. wanted to break up that little well, thing. Like, I don't know. But I, I was just, just assuming I was just that that perpetuates. I, well, I, was, I was just getting involved in the scene when there was... I don't think we're getting that much. I remember if we could... Well, yeah. You know, and I'm not, I mean, to me... Yeah, because just because it was doing... Well, I know that I, I would... And then, which is why they actually closed it. And I know that various members of the community, the people who are... Yeah, I go back and I think... It is interesting because, yeah, I think back to like the first, but the first couple of years of one of the lines, where it was basically, there, um, and it's so I think this, it was just before the smoking ban. What are they doing? What they know? What so there was like, I think the gallery was like a dozen ashtrays that were like scattered all over the place. And yeah, basically, we're working towards these kind of ashtrays everywhere. And I think that's the role. Which is kind of great, and over time, we really legitimately had to shift out of that. Like, there was no way. But you know, if we go on the scene, we might. <laughs> this might be something yeah. that the end of the But what was lost was 
thinking. And frankly, you can make some. You can make some money. Something that has a national reputation. I, when it comes down to it, I'm proud of it. It's all in our time. It's all good. Good for us. Explosion. It's a 30 year old. You know, if it weren't, if it weren't a sure. class of trash art, Tokyo, or some yeah. sort of like. If you get into a current drinking binge, it has to build a chapter in the first. Or the Bauhaus Cafe. Or the first whatever. couple of photophobias when, you know, when the. I think in the Arts Council, the Art Gallery pool there, you know, create a little, there is a certain chance, you know, brain trust that if you localize it too much, Ray, Sinovskis, that you're going to lose that Jeff Frost, and you can figure out a way. The last thing I want to see big is the trying to do that gets For no money the first year. For no money, and it gets 500 people out to it, and it's just, it's just, yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I don't want how well it all works, which was like in, in whatever, 97 or 98. What are certain situations? Because it's membership driven or directed, it was like, we got a fun show. And it's like, let's bring in this person and this person. And that man, and then we'll have a big Halloween party and get a DJ. Do it for two years with no money and no artists. And you just get people involved. So I could think that suggestions could be made to the membership. There's a publication. People get paid. There's a publication. And there's some really great parts to it. It's really great. And it, and it, was, it, was, it was the same night the kiss was like, that comes to the that I had initially with Gag the Gallery to bring in interactive and interactive. As soon as I realized that Dan Sun um, was visiting the gallery, and I knew exactly who he was, that's it, and had met him a few times prior. But at this point he was at Sheridan, and I realized that, uh, that I needed to deal with new media, because new media is an art form. It is a viable art form. However, it is an art form that is just like two degrees removed from traditional plastic arts. You know, from the traditional, I'm a sculptor, I'm a painter, I'm a, I'm a printmaker, I'm a drawing, you know, I'm a drawer, uh, whatever, you know, whatever you are. You are one, you are now one step away from that. But it is something that uh, the arts really needs to do. Um, especially because they need to start to understand where the communication is going to happen between the fine artists and the new media artists, mostly computer artists or internet artists, digital artists, let's call that. Um, but I think that one of, the, one of the concerns is going to be, you know, once you start to give room to people who are in the digital arts, you 
now have to say to people who are in fine arts, who are dealing with, you know, um, you know, the creative arts in a very uh, physical manner, that you don't have room for. It. You know, and so you know, two months or three months of your year is going to be programmed for digital media. Well, you now I think the question needs to be asked. Maybe, maybe you know, a fine arts gallery like the Hampton Arts Inc. is not the right place for us. Maybe there needs to be a new place for new media. Or find a marriage between the two. But I think finding a marriage is going to be much more difficult than splitting them up. It's all shadow work and stuff. Oh, yeah. So it's all going to be totally new. Hmm? No, I don't think it will be. <laughs> uh, I think the problem there is, obviously, is that uh, you're going to create a, a major discourse between the two mediums. And it's going to be a begrudging discourse. If you allow digital arts into the gallery, you're now saying to people who are filmmakers, you know, or, or painters or anything, who you know, have earned their right to be shown, or their opportunity, I should say, not their right, their opportunity to be shown, that, you know, they don't, because they don't understand the technology, or because they don't understand, it, uh, or because they just, just don't want to do it that way, because they appreciate the physicality of, of their, their craft more than just the concept of their craft that they're not allowed in the gallery or at a limited time frame. So, I mean, just finding that, that, that balance between the two, because it's going to become more and more prevalent. It already is here. You know, it's just not... I mean, in North America, I think we have resisted it, especially in Canada we've resisted it, but in Europe it's huge. You know, there are some amazing digital shows that are going on. Uh, some amazing work being done, especially, well, I mean, Janet Cardiff and George Bersman are artists who you could say are in that field. Uh, because of the fact that they are working with digital installations that respond to you know, interactiveness. Um, so it's not a stoic uh, picture. It is not a gestalt. Or with the animal. It's a very unique uh, experience, which is now a pervasive experience. In Europe, people walk down the street and they have this last message to them from buildings. How are we going to grapple with that in the next week when it becomes an anticipation? Our galleries are going to be, you know, there will be no art on the wall. It'll be yourself. How is that? How, how does that fit into our concept? How does that fit into our concept? That's going to challenge us in many ways. It's going to challenge the gallery in many ways. The gallery itself needs to find a way to deal with that challenge. And the only way it's going to be able to deal with it is by accepting it and bringing it in as early as possible. Dealing with it as early as possible. And trying to find ways to mesh with people who are like bronze sculptors like myself and painters like myself and people who are, you know, clamps or you know, potters or you know, these kind of individuals who do not, you know, they don't think they're music producers. They, they simply create beautiful pieces. Of we knew, we knew those openings, and we get, we would, we would get licenses for those openings. Well, remember that. I think I avoided. Uh, I know we're gonna just get you in trouble, but you know, we have licenses. I don't think we're stuck. We will qualify this now. We set the foundation for the licenses. Um, <laughs> you know, we did. Yeah. Because so, because you remember, I remember the fellow who did the big because we were, I remember that board meeting so well. I think like, I would like okay, to we don't normally get licenses for our things, but we got Spencer Harris' project. I think and I'm also a bit intimidated. So happy. Even though we know they're probably happy to be there, they're probably going to drink and probably care. On the other hand, I think that my presence.
casually. Is top two. Somebody knows it. Two. Um, now it's the most money. And then there was like a whole like find it at twenty five dollars and find it. You know, Judy had to do some sort of crazy number magic to kind of get that set extra seventy five dollars because we're blowing our budget out with every sort of dime. And it had a lot of yeah. Judy was like the variable sort of mob account. There's like, there's a lot amazing. of variable. I Looking can't. back, I think it should have yeah. been um, kind of sorted out. But you know, you, you spend so many you know, years I'm not kind of like, like working the that edge. And, and I think sometimes people just party. assume it's because and, um, it's a party a lot of the time. You know, I had different that, strengths. That, and you know, you're not witnesses. That, that, that it just kind of magically happened. You're sitting down and really establishing that it can be a fluid job. But I didn't have a do a good opening. Board, and all the players 
so how people can it's really like be different. Universally difficult to try and, and so I really love setting up with the kind artists, of kind of especially if they stay and, and as much as there was like this, you know, know that there was this kind and of that's when sort of halfway or three quarters of the way in my term, there I started to ask for permission to film the process, like you're setting up and you're taking down. And then I just set the camera up and then it helped me. You know, uh, I'll and take responsibility. It, it was great. Like, like Michael Lucasen had this uh, huge, as well, like huge me. foot. I'm not really happy. Table. I think no, no one like came on the nails and all put and together, together with winches. And, and it's tiny, kind of something that did exist. For example, exists. you just like, keep saying to yourself, I'm going to be sitting around and saying, oh no, it's just a Why am I doing this? 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 He'd just keep working, but he'd talk to himself in a way. One other fellow counted obsessive people. Buzzing, you know, in, in, so in the modest gallery. And I'm still forecasting. The prince has it. And you see people problem solving. Things, things don't work and out, and, 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 uh, and it's, it's just totally this fascinating. That I wish um, so that's my favorite thing. You know, On the downside, you can get it. You can get it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, how about Uncle uh, Richard? Thanks, I don't need. That's also an invitation. That's the task of the kind of bit celerity. Take the baggage off the table and just start it. I guess I don't I don't know. Maybe people don't crave that kind of time. Of <laughs> no, we're we were playing to win. Although I thought I think I think originally I wanted to play to win. But I think this is better. Right. This is more satisfying. Particularly because I got to shove it off. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I would have preferred that. We could we could do it again. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for coming out. So long, suckers.